Good morning and welcome to Hope United Methodist Church. We're so glad to have you with us this morning from wherever you may be. Hopefully you enjoyed that extra hour of sleep unless you're like me and have a toddler, in which case you probably didn't get an extra hour of sleep on this Daylight Savings Time Sunday. A few announcements as we begin our time together this morning. First, a reminder that our weekly Bible study continues on Tuesdays on Zoom. We are working on the Gospel of Mark, and we're not done yet, so you can still join us if you'd like to. Also, we are doing our meals every Wednesday, so please continue to stop by if you need that assistance. Also, um, as you hopefully have noted by this point, if you've gotten the phone call or the mailed out letter or an email of some sort from us um, or seen the post on Facebook, we are online only until further notice. Uh, continuing on, we had hoped to be back in person today, but unfortunately with COVID and the rising case numbers in our state, we did not think it was a wise decision to begin regathering at this time. And so we are online only. So we thank you for your continued persistence in worshiping with us in this digital space. So wherever you are, take a deep breath. Center yourself, and as you breathe in, feel the Holy Spirit that is not confined to one place or space flowing into you. And as you, as you breathe out, know that the Holy Spirit goes from you into the world, just as you give God's grace to the world wherever you may be. And now, as we ponder the gift of grace that we receive and give, let us listen to our prelude.
Let us please join in the call to worship. The poor and those in solidarity with them, God is on your side. Those who mourn and feel grief about the state of the world, God is on your side. The nonviolent, gentle, and humble, God is on your side. Those who hunger and thirst for the common good, God is on your side. The merciful and compassionate, God is on your side. Those characterized by sincerity, kindness, and generosity, God is on your side. Those who work for peace and reconciliation, God is on your side. Those who keep seeking justice, God is on your side. Those who stand for justice and truth as the prophets did, who refuse to be quiet even when slandered, misrepresented, threatened, imprisoned, or harmed, God is on your side. Let us join together in our opening hymns. ancestors of our faith, from Abraham and Sarah to Paul and Phoebe. Ancestors of the faith, we remember you. We remember the prophets and priests, the ministers and teachers who have taught us the way of God. Teachers of the faith, we remember you. We remember our grandparents and parents, aunts and uncles, those who have gone before us in our lifetime. Family, Family of, of our, our faith, faith. We, we remember, remember you. you. We lift up the memories of children and grandchildren, brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, and partners and parents whose lives ended too soon. Those close in our heart, we, we remember, remember you. We lift up those whom we have lost to the ravages of pandemic. Friends, 
neighbors, parents, grandparents, children, nieces, nephews, all those whom we hold in our hearts. We pray for lives lost needlessly, whose witness was cut short by apathy and illness. Help us to remember them, Lord, that we would not ignore the mountain of grief built in these days, but would acknowledge the pain, suffering, and loss, so that we can honor them through our actions and lives. We lift up to you, O God, the names of those we have lost in this past year from our lives, knowing that they are with your heart forever. As we read these names, we will pause after every name to remember, pray, and give thanks for their life. Joyce Randall. Patricia Smith. Ralph Kane. Charles Costura. As we light these last five candles here, I would invite you to name someone he, wherever you are at home or on the road in your heart. May they be a saint from this past year or a saint from your life. Hold them in your heart as we light this candle in honor and memory of them. And here in front of me, we have some vases filled with rice and a candle placed in each one. The rice signifies the lives of all of those lost in the midst of this pandemic. There's more here than I could easily count. And that is on purpose because it represents the over 220,000 lives lost here in the United States and the over one million lives lost around the world. We remember and we mourn this tragedy. We know that it will have impact on our lives for generations to come. We remember those who have joined the saints, whose journey and labors here on earth was cut short. And we name them and hold them in our hearts. The ones we know, the ones we do not know, and the ones who we never got the chance to know.
We celebrate the lives of those we have named, O God, and lift up many more names in our hearts. Family of God, we remember you and we honor you. We know you are with us in the spirit of worship and you will not be forgotten. We give thanks, O God, for all who have gone on to join with you beyond this life. We trust in the hope of resurrection and the promise of new life in Christ, and know that in our grief and celebration, O God, you are with us through it all, and we are not left alone. In the name of Christ, in whom love lives forever, we pray. Amen. Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Well, good morning, kids. Standing over here by these candles that we just lit in honor and in memory of those whom we have lost in our lives. Because even when we lose someone in our lives, they're not gone. There's a beautiful book that I love reading with my daughter that I unfortunately could not find. Um, that happens when you move, even after two years. You still can't find certain things, but you know you own them. Um, but the book is called Ida Always, and it's about two polar bears. And one of the polar bears gets sick. And slowly, she's able to do less and less with the other polar bear until eventually she passes on and he's left alone. 
Except he discovers that he's not actually alone. Because he remembers that she is still with him. When he sees clouds that look like elephants and other shapes. When he hears the city buses going by the zoo. When he plays with that ball they both cherished. He remembers her. He remembers Ida. And knows that she is still with him. And so today we remember those that we have lost, but who are still with us. And I have a couple things that help me do that as well. The first is this bell that probably just blew out the microphone because I held it too close. But, you know, I'm sure many of you have heard the expression that when a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. And so this bell my grandma had when uh, I was growing up, and she gave it to me um, because they were moving, speaking of moving, and getting rid of all their stuff. And uh, she thought maybe I would like to have it. And so it reminds me of my family. Those in my family who we've lost, and then those in my family who are still here. And I also have this little blue rock, and I don't know if you can see it, but um, often when I do a remembrance of baptism, I will put little rocks in the baptismal font. And then um, I will invite people to take one out. And that reminds me of All Saints Day as well, because it reminds me of how all of those who came before me helped me to become who I am in the faith. I'm not a pastor because um, I woke up one day and said, gee, I think today I'm going to be a pastor. I'm not a pastor because, um, you know, I just decided it'd be a fun gig. But I am a pastor because there were people who came before me who helped lay a foundation and raise me up in the faith so that I would be where I am today. And so today, that is what our children's moment is about, is remembering those who came before us and who helped us to be who we are. So I hope you'll take some time today to think about those people in your life. Now let us listen to our first lesson. Our first lesson comes from the third chapter of 1 John. See what kind of love the Father has given to us in that we should be called God's children. And that is what we are. Because the world didn't recognize him, it doesn't recognize us. Dear friends, now we are God's children, and it hasn't yet appeared what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him, because we'll see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, even as he is pure. May God grant understanding in the hearing of his word. Our second lesson for today is taken from the gospel, gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 12. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. I know we normally read from the Common English, but the translation of the Beatitudes is a lot better in the NRSV than it is in the CEB. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak. He taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. 
For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, something that should perhaps be defining for our faith. Yet, how many of us live our lives by these principles? I mean, listen to these again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We just heard it. Pastor, why are you reading it again? Because I want us to think about this. What does it mean to be blessed? Now, this is probably important for us to define, especially in light of all that has passed. Now, for some of us, blessed is that thing you post on Instagram after you find that close parking spot at Target. But that's not what blessed really means. For some of us, blessed is what we use when something in our lives goes well, and we attribute it to God showing us favor, sort of how it works, closer than the Instagram concept. But the true definition of blessed, and what I think Christ is going for here in his teaching, is this, to be consecrated, sacred, holy, sanctified. It is not to say that things are fine and dandy because we are peacemakers, or that our lives are peachy because we are merciful. No, when we live into the challenge and calling of the Beatitudes, these foundational teachings of Christ, when they become the core and center of our being, we in our lives and in our life after death strive for holiness and sanctification. That's what this whole thing is actually about. The pursuit of holiness in our lives and our world, to be sanctified. That's why we call it All Saints Day. It's the day we celebrate those we've lost along the way and remember their lives and acknowledge who they were and how they lived. We learn from their example, both the good and the bad. And remember that they were blessed by God. That is, that they were present in a moment of sanctification, whether they consciously or unconsciously knew it, and that we can learn from that. The redemptive power of God is such that a singular moment can be a breakthrough point to teach those who come after us. To be blessed in Jesus' sermon, then, is not a happy, good feelings kind of blessing. He's talking about a deeper understanding of what it means to live with these principles at the core of our being. The knowledge that these are radical statements he's uttering that should challenge all of us. I mean, blessed are the meek? Blessed are the merciful? Those do not sound like the leadership qualities we are going for these days, do they? Christ pivots us away from commandments and towards a lifestyle based not on rule keeping, but instead defined by seeking God through the act of living. Instead of holding ourselves back in fear that we're going to break a rule, he tells us to risk boldly and go against the status quo to seek out God in our midst. Have any of the persons who you lift up as a saint in your life done this? If not, they still present to us a powerful example because their experiences and their sharing them with us help us to learn and grow. As Yoda tells Luke Skywalker in Star Wars The Last Jedi, we are what they grow beyond. Which is to say 
that we honor those who came before us by learning from their examples and lives and by becoming better for it, by truly learning. So today is All Saints, when we honor and remember those who have, we have lost this past year and all those who have come before us and now rest from their labors. But all this begs the question, Will we have the courage to actually learn? Will we learn from those who fought in the Civil War? As Coach Boone puts it in Remember the Titans, this is where the scene is that they're on, they've just run through a forest, and they find themselves on the battlefield of Gettysburg. And he says to the football team, this is where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg. 50,000 men died right here on this field, fighting the same fight that we are still fighting among ourselves today. This green field right here, painted red, bubbling with the blood of young boys, smoke and hot lead pouring right through their bodies. Listen to their souls, men. I killed my brother with malice in my heart. Hatred destroyed my family. You listen, and you take a lesson from the dead. If we don't come together right now on this hallowed ground, we too will be destroyed, just like they were. I don't care if you like each other or not, but you will respect each other. And maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll learn to play this game like men. Now, most of us are not football players. But I would hope that most of us can take the wider point that he is making and know that we need to learn to live this life like adults instead of living it like children. Will we learn from those who struggled against segregation and oppression to try and expose the hatred and bigotry we seek to gloss over? Will we learn from those who struggled with the flu pandemic in 1918? Will we learn anything from our past, or are we simply doomed to repeat it over and over again? We can offer lofty prayers to those we have lost along the way, but if we do not grow beyond our previous failings, then we do not honor those saints who came before us. So this All Saints Day, don't remember with rose-colored glasses. Don't assume that everyone was perfect, but learn from our predecessors' imperfections and failings. Dare to be persecuted for wanting it to be better. Dare to live that you would be blessed. Our country and our world stands in a place of bitterness. How do you contribute to that? Our citizens here and people around the world live on the knife's edge of poverty. How do you stand up for systems that would actually address this problem beyond lofty prayers and promises of trickle-down wealth? Are we doomed to repeat our past, or will we grow beyond it? This is why we have such a great cloud of witnesses, friends, because it gives us a chance. God gives us the grace, the courage, the ability, and the wisdom to learn from and avoid those mistakes of those before us. Those we've lost along the way are still here within us. We carry their legacy and we honor their memory. We have a chance, because of them, to be so much more. If we'll seize it if we'll give ourselves a chance, if only we'll answer the call to grow beyond and to grow up for all those we've lost along the way. Amen. Let us now join in our next hymn.
We come now to a time of offertory, and I know we cannot be here together to place our gifts and offerings in a box or a basket or before God on the altar, but we know that God is with us wherever we are. And so we lift up those offerings we place before God. And as we do that, let's have a moment of silent reflection before we sing our doxology. Now let us join in our doxology. Let us pray. O oh God, who desires good for all creatures, satisfy our hunger not just for food, but for freedom, truth, justice, and love. O oh, risen Christ, you revealed yourself to us as one who gives to the poor and cares for all people. We dedicate our lives and our offerings to your service. O oh, Holy Spirit, bless these gifts and abide in our hearts so that our gifts and our actions may live out our faith. Glorify God and bring forth a fruitful harvest for the kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. As you prepare to go out into the world, whether that be a digital world or a physical world, my challenge is that you would learn from those who came before, that you would accept the ability to grow beyond and to be better. God gives us the ability each and every day to take a new step in our journey that we would draw closer to God and to one another. So may who you are and how you live reflect that. May you be a person of faith, integrity, and honesty who challenges and supports those who do that as well. May you be someone who learns and grows as Christ would have us do. Amen. Let us join in our benediction response.